in October. I wish it was out last week, but hey, it's a long way to go, so I'm not going to sit here talking about my book till uh, October. But you do have to know, I finally got my tear sheets, and it's really better than I thought it was. It's not like I forgot what I wrote, but I worked so hard on it, I kind of forgot the painting. Yeah, I forgot the painting. You know what I think I want to do right now is I want to like move in another direction. I was up late last night. I'm not complaining. It's not a complaint. I don't complain that much, really. I've had uh, luck. I've gotten everything I wanted out of life. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. A lot longer. Like about 40 years longer than I thought it would. Maybe 45 years longer. But I, I got there. I always knew that if I stuck to it. I always had like a Chinese view of, uh, of life which is never give up, just the long march. My life has been the long march, no matter what the obstacles or impediments keep going. And by the way, yesterday as I was coming out of a restaurant, I saw a poor crippled boy, man, in his 20s with legs that were broken at birth with his mother and his brother. And I looked at him and I prayed to God and I said, thank you, God, for giving me health. Thank you, God, and bless that boy. And I said, God, I will never, ever complain again. You have to understand how lucky you are if you have all of your faculties. You really have to thank God for it. I mean, that's all I can say to you. It's, it's an amazing thing to understand what could happen to us at any second and how lucky we are if we just can breathe without pain, walk without pain, sleep without pain. What a miracle it really is. So there are things all around us that remind us how lucky we really are. Yes, we're living through extremely dangerous dark times. Yes, we're living through a minor dictatorship that can get very bad. It can metastasize overnight into something much worse unless the madman is stopped. Because as I said, Friday it was 10,000 Syrian Muslims. Then by Saturday morning it was 100,000. Then by Sunday, him and Kerry, the other madman, said 200,000. What is to stop these maniacs from bringing in 2 million Syrians or Abkhazians? Well, no one even knows where they're coming from. And why, if they're all running from war-torn Syria are 70% of them men of military age, not women and children. What are they coming here for? What's he building, an army? Another army, another, another one coming in to, to an army of voters, an army of what? They're not coming here to stabilize America, they're being brought here to destabilize white, heterosexual, Christian America. That's why Obama is sitting with the chessboard putting them in areas that are predominantly white, Christian, Republican. Why don't you ask Chuck Todd about that and see if he gets upset, that beard. Take a look at the chessboard that the sorority is using and see where they're placing the refugees and you'll understand what's going on here and how he has usurped all the power of the presidency that he was ever entitled to and he is robbing our constitution from us, robbing our very heritage from us right in front of our eyes like a grand thief. Grand auto theft, only this is grand nation theft right in front of your eyes. Savage Nation back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, we've been talking about <clears throat> radical Catholicism today on the Savage Nation and how we must focus on it because... We know that radical Islam is a danger to the world's stability. And we have basically all focused on this, uh, rightly so. Not strongly enough, obviously. And importing more Muslims, many of whom will be radicals, is, is suicidal, of course. That's part of the uh, debate ongoing with everyone except the government media complex or the New Reich. Nick on WABC, make your point quickly, please. Time is short. Yes, shame on you for saying or equating so-called radical Catholicism with radical Islam when we have, and, you know, not, you know, radical Judaism, which is, you know, the synagogue of Satan, what we have last night on the Emmys, this vulgar display. Wait, 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 wait. now you're jumping all over the map, so you want to now do an Ann Coulter on me, is that it? No, no. I, I, you're going to. Well, who are you attacking? Me or Jews? Who are you attacking now? You're mad because I called him Lenin's Pope? Is that what's bothering you? I'm mad because you ignore this cultural holocaust, which holocaust. Well, which now, you know, hold it. Don't, don't turn it to the Jews now. The Jews are not coming here through the Pope. The Pope is pushing a false ideology that the church itself opposed for a long time. So, which side are you on? Are you on the side of communism or capitalism? Uh, this is. 
I mean, you don't understand that. Oh, I don't understand. Who are you, Nick, that you understand things I don't understand? Let me explain something to you. You say that radical Catholicism cannot be compared to radical Islam. Isn't that your main point? Yes. Okay. Let me answer it very succinctly, and I want you to think about it, Nick, before responding. Bombs kill people. Radical ideas kill nations. The Pope has radical ideas, which are in many ways more dangerous than bombs. You can protect yourself against bombs and bomb throwers more readily than you can protect yourself against radical ideas uh, being put forward by a nice, kindly old man. Do you understand, Nick, why the danger is so great? Mm hmm All right, thanks for calling. I'm glad I helped you with that. Uh, these are very powerful times. Very powerful times indeed. For Jewish people around the world, of whom there are only 9 million, we have the end of the year 57-something or other. I don't know what the year is. I lost 75, I think. Let me see if I remember that. 5775 is ending for the Jewish people around the world on Tuesday night. At sundown, there begins the new Jewish year of 5776. That means the religion has been in place for 5,776 years. And many people don't know much about their own religion, let alone Judaism. Most Jews are clueless about their own religion. And even secular Jews like Larry David might go to, I'm guessing now, would go to a synagogue uh, once or twice a year. They go on Yom Kippur, they hang around, they mock everyone. They're the jesters in the back of the synagogue. Yeah, yeah, they're sitting there, look at that, man. Laughing at the guy with the yarmulke and the talus. We all know the synagogue jester. They're people too, but, and most of them are in Hollywood, of course. They're mocking not only their religion, but they mock the nation that made their fortunes for them. But how do you figure that one out? But nevertheless, <clears throat> so sundown tomorrow night, and people go on a fast for 24 hours, and they're supposed to atone for their sins, something that many religions do on a much more free, frequent basis, by the way, than once a year. I find it odd. Many religions have fast day, many more than one. I mean, Jews have more than one fast day, but it's, the one that most Jews know is the Yom Kippur day. So even the most secular Jew, think of Bernie Sanders, a man who's non-observant, might, might uh, even he might go into a synagogue to pick up a few votes. And oh, they'd applaud him. Oh, they, they'd be all, oh, oh, that's Bernie Sanders. Senator, he might be president. He's one of us. There'd be a hushed tone as the crumpled tie salesman walks into the, uh, the great synagogue. So we're coming upon this powerful day for so many people on earth, not only Jews, but many Christians who love the Jewish people, of whom there are many, mainly fundamentalist Jews, not the Catholic who just called, he's a stone-hearted anti-Semite, always has been. Tries to turn the Pope into, and now all of a sudden, I should go and attack Hollywood. Who's done it more than me for 21 years? I don't know who they are. I don't know that they're Satan's sons and daughters. I don't know that. You don't have to tell me that. I know who they are. They're drug addicts and deviants of the lowest order. I've been fighting them for 21 years. I mean, who's done the Hollywood idiot better than me? So please don't tell me about that. So I was trying to take inventory for myself. I don't know why every September is like the beginning of the year, the end of the year for all of us. And I said, you know, I'm a little tired lately. I, I can't deal with the world when I see a president as mad as this getting away with what he's getting away with. It's starting to weigh on me. You know, Atlas shrugged. I'm not Atlas. So I wrote down what I'm working on. One, government zero release and promotion. Two, journal book, final edits. That's uh, 65,000 words, due in winter 2016. Three, eight millimeter film editing from 1969 till the present. Four, new book, top secret. Five, immunity handbook, final copy due. Teddy book due spring 2016. My uh, science fiction novel, a digital edition for downloads with my watercolors. The detective, edit and have it illustrated. Nine, Tiburon the novella. That's about 100,000 words being typed. 10, Leaving New York, a novella, about 80,000 words being typed. My collected watercolors, I'm trying to put them in some order. So those are the 11 things that I'm working on. And uh, I hope you wish me a good year, because I wish you a good year. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how are you, Blue Monday? Blue Monday. Got to work, plan to sleep all day. Here come Tuesday. It is. The fact that the retrovirus in the White House has found an ally to amplify his agenda in Rome. Welcome to the Savage Nation. The retrovirus on Friday says he's going to bring in with the stroke of a pen 10,000 Muslims. By Saturday morning, it's 100,000 Muslims because there wasn't a peep from the drunk. By Sunday, him and Kerry got together and had a big laugh and said, we're bringing in 200,000 Muslims from war-torn Syria. 70% of whom are single males of a military age, uh, almost no women and children. No one stops him. Boehner says dealing with conservatives, how do you do it? He says even gar garbage men get used to the smell of bad garbage. That's the opposition party in the new Soviet America. And I explained that the Obama administration is Mao-like. I explained it last Friday. I said that the Pope is part of the problem. Attacks capitalism, attacks air conditioning, uses air conditioning and capitalism. The Vatican has the largest the reserve of gold in the world. They don't sell it to help the poor. The Vatican is filled with some of the greatest art in history. They could sell it off and raise money for the poor. The day the Pope takes a thousand Syrians into the Vatican is the day I'll believe a word he says. The day the Pope turns off the air conditioning in the uh, uh, the in, in the, the papal jet or Alitalia in honor of the Pope's message turns off air conditioning on the flight from Rome. Yeah. That's the day. Then we look at Argentina. Argentina, the Pope's homeland, once had the 14th highest GDP, then they went into radical redistribution plans. It's now the 63rd uh, GDP uh, of the world. How do radicals, who, how do Catholics who are thinking Catholics put up with this man? How do they not look through him? Well, I mean, you can't respect the man who's trying to take away your freedom, can you? You have to say, what, he's holy? Why is he, what made him holy? He, he's just a man. If we learn anything in America, we don't worship royalty. We don't worship religious royalty. We don't worship secular royalty. We don't worship royalty. So that's what we talked about. And then there was a man who took umbrage last hour. And he said, how dare you call it radical Catholicism and equate it to radical Islam. And he tried to launch into an Ann Coulter on me attacking Jews in Hollywood, which was kind of idiotic because that's not the issue. And I said, it's very simple because bombs kill people. And you can defend yourself more readily against bombs because you can almost see the, the bomb maker and the bomb thrower more readily, than, more readily than radical ideas which can kill nations, which I thought was quite good. That's all. And now here we are in hour number three. 855-407-282 is a phone number. Argentina is the question facts of Argentina, what's happened in Argentina, and how it's gone down. The GDP has gone straight down, straight down in the toilet as a result of the redistribution policies being practiced there and also the liberation theological practices as uh, professed by Obama's Christian preacher, Reverend Wright, and now uh, Obama's Pope. Uh, he, you know, he is Obama's pope, now that I think about it. I don't know what Obama's uh, Christian sect is. Does anyone know? Was Reverend Wright, he was, uh, they're not Catholic, are they, Robert? I don't really know. I don't mean in any disparaging. I don't know. Does any, anyone know Reverend Wright? What did he profess other than Marxism and a hatred of American white people? I know he hated America, the preacher. He sat there for 20 years and then said he didn't know what he was saying. Imagine Obama sat in the church for 20 years and then when it became a scandal, he said, I didn't, I didn't know what he was saying, and we quit. Amazing. Members of Congress warn not to touch Pope. That's an interesting story. Members of Congress warn not to touch Pope. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a roll call. Members will be blocked two ways from touching the Pope, Pope Francis. Too many members of Congress cannot be trusted to behave themselves when Pope Francis comes to the Capitol. The congressional leadership has decided. And so to enforce decorous discipline, some extraordinary measures are being ready. 
Each party is assembling teams of lawmakers to essentially act as blocking tackles, willing to restrain any of their colleagues intent